So today I'm having here the Honda Africa Twin 2017. So let's find out how good it is. Honda Africa Twin is a big brand in motorcycling. We all know the 750 version, which was on the market until 2003. It was a very well-selling, uh, versatile, robust motorcycle. And it still have, you know, the prices on the market is still, still very, very high. And it took 13 years to Honda to create a new model of, uh, with 1000 engine. And, you know, they, they were a little bit late on the market of adventure bikes. That's, you know, for sure. Uh, BMW GS in the meantime created a major you know major preposition on the market and but you know it took some time to honda to create a very 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 good motorcycle they they tried a lot of settings of of you know like a lot of different types of suspension and 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 wheels you know dimensions and and types of engines to create this one um well in terms of design it's just for it, this is my cup of tea to be honest uh it's not super wide it's a it's a big difference to like for example uh, BMW uh, R 1200 Adventure or something like this. It, it's very capable in off-road. One of the things which people criticize often, it's the exhaust on this 2017 model. And, um, but uh, I, I don't have any problems with it. You know, like it, it's a little bit too big, but I, I like it. And especially I like the sound. Uh, it's very important to say that this is the model 2017. So this is not the newest 2018 which has a electronic throttle, full maps, a little bit updated cockpit and, and yeah, and this, you know, updated uh, muffler, but, um, and one new demeter is more in the engine, but uh, it stays almost the same. So it's the, the, the review hopefully will be still relevant for you. This engine is very interesting. It's very modern. It uses a lot of parts or a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of technical things from the CRF 450RR, for example, the Unicam head design or the uh, gearbox design. The overall dimensions of the engine, this is very interesting. It, they are very small. The length of the, the, length of the engine it's, uh, is the smaller or the same as the CB500 engine. They also try to do a lot in terms of center of gravity. So it, they're put uh, the control of ABS and the battery and some other parts behind the, the cylinders. So really, uh, you know, the, the, the overall weight uh, ratio it's 50 to 50 almost so this is really interesting and you will feel it when you ride it the engine itself produces 95 horsepower and about uh, 98 newton meters of torque and it's just the standard in the category of these bikes these nowadays like uh, bmw gs has it the same 850 i mean at least the maximum power uh, the same with uh, the triumph tiger which i tested uh, last week you can you can uh, watch the watch the review here in the corner so in terms of power i don't need more everyone will tell you that 100 horsepower it's the you know it's the top you can use in off-road so that's the first thing and in on, on road the you know like the feeling of the motorcycle is so nice of the of the engine that i just i don't i, I have never had a feeling to to ha to need more even we're riding with the pillion i can imagine that with three luggages and full of you know things maybe on a highway Probably, yeah, he would need to, you know, gear a little bit more often or something like that. But, but like this, it's, it's really enough. And just today I, I tried it on a closed road and it was 220 kilometers very quickly there on a six gear. And it would go more in just, uh, yeah, one discipline when you feel it is if you, if you have like BMW 1200 GS or, or, or KTM. It's, it's the acceleration from 140 to 180 or something like this. But, uh, but besides that, this is really enough powerful engine. So let's look at the suspension and wheels. So Honda uses a 21, 21 inch front wheel, the gold one, which is really nice, and 18 in the, in the, in the, in the rear wheel. And you know, like this is, this is the, one of the small differences 
between the Honda and its alternatives. So 18 inch wheel, uh, it doesn't mean probably a big difference for you when riding, but uh, I think that this one together with some, you know, changes on the, or, or yeah, some changes on the suspension and, and you know, the overall design of the, of the engine and everything, it's just beautiful recipe for like a really capable, comfortable, easy to use motorcycle. 18 is something which uh, you probably often you would see on uh, like real motocross motorcycles and uh, rather than you know all the competition uses 17 of them. There is a fully adjustable suspension front and rear. In the front we have suspension inverted fork and the difference between this one and the competition is that only Honda has 45 millimeters diameter of tubes and, and it, 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 it's supposed to mean that it should be a little bit more, it, it would be a little bit more rigid, it would have a little bit more rigidity and there will be probably a little bit more signals to the, to the rider. And again, if you now change the bike and sit on the BMW or KTM, you would probably don't feel the difference from the, you know, the, from the fork. But overly, together with the wheels and engine and, you know, this, this, this nice um, ergonomic design, it just works really cool. Uh, you can also adjust the preload of the rear shock very easily by this wheel and you just have it done in 20 seconds. In terms of brakes, Honda as, as always uses uh, the Nissin brakes. There is a four piston caliper dual disc uh, radially mounted with, with, with the ABS. You can turn it off on the rear wheel here with the button and it just works wonderful. I, again, like nothing, nothing to complain about in, in all kind of, you know, scenarios. You can use the motorcycle from something like 170 centimeters to 200 uh, centimeters with no problems. You will feel always nice. We had a girl here with 172 centimeters, I believe, and she used, this, used the higher position of the seat and with no problems at all riding all day. Uh, the, the seat you can adjust in two positions, one uh, 870 millimeters to 850 millimeters. So again, this is good. And if this doesn't, you know, it's not uh, enough, you can always buy a lower seat. So this is, this is perfect. Mm, the handlebar, 81 centimeters wide. Uh, they, they just offer the, you know, adventure like feeling. This is, you know, no problems at all for my height. height when I want to go off-road and stand sometimes, uh, I would need to, of course, uh, increase the height of the, of the position of the handlebar. Where the problem starts is actually uh, the windshield, which uh, is designed for someone with 186 centimeters approximately. And for my way, high, height, doesn't work well and I would need to replace it straight away. Um, also the foot pegs, probably the biggest downside and the uh, rear brake lever it's just uh, designed for, I don't know who, but uh, if you have a motorcycle boots, it will probably not work for you and you would need to replace it. It's actually not much money, so that's not a problem. And, you know, again, the fundamentals are awesome. So it's just a small, small, small amount of improvements you would need to do. The same with the plastic guard of uh, radiator. I would need to, I would definitely buy uh, aluminum or steel ones to protect the radiator, which is very important in off-road. Maybe the seat, a lot of owners complaining about the seat and the comfort in, you know, when you ride all day, which like, you know, any motorcycle seat, seat would probably be good when you ride all day. But uh, yeah, but there are alternatives, alternatives both from Honda or Turatec or some other companies. I personally don't have any problems with it riding all day, but, but some people have, so this is probably another, another thing you would replace. So now let's check the Africa uh, on road when riding. Welcome to Gran Canaria. It's the paradise for motorcycling, both motorcyclists and, and cyclists and, and, and you know like lots of other groups of people. Anyway, this is a uh, Africa Twin 2017 as you as you've seen in my video and um, I have to say I really enjoyed this version like the 2018 is more modern has a different uh, display and you need you can change the right modes and I actually I haven't tried it yet I can't wait to do it but uh, so far I really like this this one because it's so user-friendly and so it's just you know you don't need to think about anything it's just everything is designed for you you just uh, you know plug you just put there the key to ignition and you just sit on the bike 
start the engine with amazing sound, really adventurous and kind of no, like an ideal ideal um, amount of loudness. It's, it's very nice and you just go and you don't need to set up your windshield because you can't and right modes and, and you know loads of other stuff in, the, in your display and you just go and enjoying with no really uh, problems. And this is something which is really important for adventure bikes because you don't need to think, you know, like what sort of setting you should do or what is happening, what, what this, you know, uh, what this signal means and everything. You just, when you are in Romania or Albania, you just want your bike to support you. And I feel this support from Africa. Uh, speaking on, on the road, this engine is absolutely like, like for me, this is a cup of tea. This is my cup of tea, really. Uh, uh, you know, despite the fact it has just like only 95 horse, horse, horsepower, I always feel that I have plenty of power. We test the elasticity with, uh, for example, XSR uh, 900 Yamaha or Ducati Multistrada 950. And of course, you know, when you start at 100 kilometers per hour on every gear, uh, the Africa was the last one. That's, that's kind of, you know, the thing. But uh, when you don't compare with other bikes, you always like the feeling, you know, that, that how you feel the, the speed and the acceleration. It's always enough, even riding with a pillion. And, and that's the fact because, you know, the, how I can support my, uh, you know, this, this sentence is that you always have that fourth or fifth or, fifth or sixth gear, not really often second or third. And, and that's kind of uh, one or more, one or two more in average than I did on Tiger 800, which you can also uh, see my video. It's very nice on my YouTube. I put the link right there. Um, so basically the behavior, the feelings of Tiger and Ducati and Africa, it's very, very different. But uh, I like all of them, of course. But for the long distance traveling, for when I go to Albania or to Russia or around the globe, Africa would be my probably my favorite bike. In case I would like to do something modern and enjoy the speed, enjoy the power of the engine, sometimes go fast, because uh, otherwise I would take a Himalayan or something slow and stylish. Anyway, uh, let's let's look at about the few details, the brakes no problems at all even with the pillion again like we did like we had 165 kilos or something and even when you de decelerate from 100 uh, or more always no problems depending on the on the tires but the abs works nice on both wheels so no problem the traction control you can set it up on this model and three levels and you can also turn it off which you can which you will see soon in off-road but uh, uh, but it doesn't work that, that discreet and that silent as you can uh, as you can see on a, on a Tiger 800 so probably you know Tiger is a, has a little bit more advanced technology there so the Africa is not right now even the 2018 model the leader in technologies if you check the BM, new D, BMW 850GS or Tiger Triumph it's the Africa definitely is not packed by the you know most state-of-the-art technologies and electronic systems but uh, it's designed very very well the engine and the sound oh my goodness this is this is definitely something I want to I want to hear uh, from 2000 rpm it just works beautifully it doesn't have a like a massive peak it doesn't bring you like extraordinary level of, um, of adre adrenaline that's for sure not but uh, it will really suit most most of riders, I believe, including me. Um, and you know that this is supported by the revenue, like by the sales figures, which are awesome. And in many markets, Africa Twin is now the leader in adventure bikes. And for example, in the Czech Republic right now, this is the best-selling motorcycle. Uh, if I don't take a scooters as the motorcycle category, but from all the bikes, 125 or more. This is the best-selling motorcycle in our market. They sold, by the way, in the Czech Republic, more Africa Twins than, uh, than all Suzuki's or I think all Triumphs in all market. So this is, this is really cool. <clears throat> so, welcome to small off-road. The ABS, I just turned it off on the rear wheel. 
the traction control, it's turn it off. It has three levels and, and also you can turn it off uh, at all. So this with, with what I did and let's find out how the Africa Twin feels in terrain. And uh, <laughs> I can tell you straight away that this is a damn fun. It's really, really great motorcycle from, you know, like when is someone watching at it from the perspective of like a adventure rider i'm very happy to go uh you know with my bmw gs dakar or uh, i before that i had 800 gs bmw and i just love this kind of motorcycles in africa oh my goodness in terrain probably the strongest side of the africa is really in off-road uh, uh this concrete unit has uh, road tires and and it doesn't have a crash bar or anything like that. And uh, and the last thing I would like to do is to fall down here with the bike, which is not mine. It's the Andres from the, his rental company here in Gran Canaria. So I would like to go very, uh, you know, I just have to be careful. Um, but uh, I have to tell you that I really enjoyed it. Uh, the engine, like here in terrain 95 horsepower is really uh the ideal amount or at maybe the maximum amount you can you can enjoy and stay alive so that's that's quite a nice one i really really love how the engine feels this two cylinder with 270 degree crankshaft here it shows the strongest side uh it really doesn't matter if you have in terrain second or third gear uh most of time it offers you a nice power and uh, just the support with a great sound and you just feel that everything is right <laughs> everything is all right so this is I really like it's very important on the adventure you just feel that the bike is there with you to support you and that's really cool uh, uh, it has 50 to 50 almost the uh, weight ratio between the front and rear t rear tire here I have to be a little bit careful because I don't want to <laughs> fall down here and here's like a little bit a little bit uh, narrow yeah all right um so this is another great thing the weight ratio and it really means that the bike is nimble easy to operate even on very technical passages uh, <laughs> Woo -hoo! um i even tried to do an off-road with the passenger no problem at all you can fully adjust the suspension so it, you can hardly find the limit of this motorcycle. It's more probable that you will be hitting, you know, your own limits. So that's that's the that's the good thing. Uh, I haven't tried yet the KTM 1090 uh, 1090 R, but uh, so so far I can't tell you which is better. But I'm um, really curious. Hopefully I will test it soon. But so far I really enjoy the Africa. Hardly, kind of, hardly. It's it's very difficult to find downsides. In off-road, it's definitely the food packs, which is small, as I told you and showed you. This is really something I would need to replace it straight away. Maybe for S S W Motec. That's my favorite brand for this one. Mm, uh, also, the front, the re uh, rear brake lever. It's too small for me, for my leg, <laughs> and uh, for my foot. And um, but that's that's kind of a you know small problems overly here so here it is this is the conclusion uh africa twin 1000 model 2017 i really enjoyed these days with 50 africa i told you all the pros and cons of it the cons are actually very tiny and uh, this is really good motorcycle there are the other you know bikes on the market too so it's it's in the end of the day it's it's really up to you whether you like triumph bmw or suzuki but uh honda is really one of my favorites so I can't wait to test the 2018 model and so far, thank you very much.